What up, YouTube? So I kind of just went and got everything set up in beta flight and, uh, you know, just got everything set up with my transceiver on my own without filming it because I had to go and resort to watching YouTube videos to do that. So I don't do it too often to, to even talk about it on a video. And plus, this stuff's kind of boring. But here's the build. This is what it looks like. But unfortunately, I haven't gotten tuned in yet because I'm having problems with the video transmitter. Now, I had problems with the video transmitter when I first built my other X Hover Beta Flight using the Unify Pro 5 volts. I had trouble because I'm messing with it, messing with it, messing with it. It wasn't too bad, but it was causing an inconvenience. So then I finally bought another Unify Pro 5 volts and it worked fine this whole entire time. Now one thing I should have known when I built this one is I should have known that I shouldn't have touched that Unify Pro 5 volts. I shouldn't have put a uh, um, conformal coating on it. I don't know if that does them in because of the heat or what, but I was just having problems with the 5 volts on this. Well, I was having problems with the Unify Pro on this, so I tried several different ways of wiring it, switching where the uh, how it was connected to the beta flight board and as you can see I lost all my neatness uh, wouldn't fix it so I took I ripped the transmitter off my old quad put it on here and it worked fine and then I started to tune it and then the video started cutting out again and then I found out that the little pigtail broke off the transmitter so I just I, get, I know a lot of people run those Unify Pro 5 volts have no problem, but I just have a lot of problems with them. And uh, when I Google search it, other people have problems with them. So what I ended up doing was, I was like, screw all that. Um, I'm gonna, I bought the cheapest transmitter I could find on Amazon, $13 for this 200 milliwatt transmitter. And all the cheap Am transmitter on Amazons are RPSMA, which means that on the like female on the male piece I guess well it means that yeah I guess this would be the male piece but it has the pin and this is a female piece but usually the female piece has the pin but it doesn't so I just bought uh, another Pagoda 2 but with RPMSA and uh, I'm gonna go and put this in there now this actually uses 7 to 24 volts so I'm going to have to use that uh, VBAT filtering circuit on the RAM, which I have desoldered when I was trying to uh, troubleshoot the Unify Pro. So I think I can some I think I can solder it on without pulling out the Betaflight board, but I'm definitely going to go and um, get rid of this mess here. And uh, I'm going to run the Swift off five volts, and I know some people have problems running Swift off five volts. But uh, in my previous build, I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this, getting its power from the RAM with the with the uh, pin selected for VBAT, and I'm going to run the Swift off just the regular five volts. And uh, I'm going to do it off camera because at this point it's not worth filming. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going and I'm going to see if this $13 transmitter from Amazon works better than the Unify Pro. As you can see, my workbench is a big mess, and that's because I started stealing parts from my hexacopter because I wanted to use this transmitter. This is a Immersion RC transmitter. Pretty much everyone was using these transmitters when uh, FPV first came out, and these transmitters are bulletproof. I went through so much on this transmitter, and it still works fine. It worked better than the Unify Pro. But the problem is that they're so big for these days' builds. I had a this is this got crammed in the blackout. Uh, 250 but uh, when I had it in my hex there's plenty of room in the hex plenty of room in the hex but uh, yes yeah, so I tore apart the hex to see if I could use this but it's just way too big but yeah I wish they Immersion RC made another they made the, the Triumph uh, the Tramp but it has just so much options I wish that uh, I mean these things were bulletproof I wish it was a little smaller and I would just still be using these Okay, I miraculously was able to get it wired up and the video is really locked in. So hopefully this will do it. 
I want to mount everything back together. I just wanted to say though that you know the new transmitter requires the VBAT. It requires battery voltage at RAM, and you can't get battery voltage at the top of the board at all. Well, I tried sticking my soldering iron in between the board here to solder that jumper for VBAT, and apparently the trace is blown out between that selector jumper and this pin here. So I was able to solder in a jumper trace from VBAT to this pin here, so I had VBAT on the top of the board. And then I run my run cam swift off the 5 volts, transmitter off the VBAT, and uh, we'll see how reliable it is. I want to go and uh, close everything up now. Okay, to make a long story short, I'm now flying, but it wasn't as easy as putting it back together uh, like the previous clip. So I put it all back together, I go to fly it. As soon as I start flying it, the video cuts out again. But this time, it's not the transmitter cutting out. The video is just cutting out black and going back. Just like my previous build, where I ended up finding out that the problem with that was actually the Betaflight board, uh, and I traced that to a bad solder joint on an inductor on the back side of the board. So that build, I ended up just bypassing the OSD and just going straight from camera to transmitter. So I was like, great. Well, on this time... On this board, I was trying to probe around to see if I could pinpoint it to a specific component. I couldn't. So, what I ended up doing is I ended up... Um, I still have the camera going to video in, and I still have the transmitter connected to video out. But I jumpered both of them together, which caused the video to be locked on with not cutting out anymore. But it also allowed the OSC to be kind of ghosting in the background. And doing it that way, I had perfect video, no problems with the video, and then I could still tune it using the OSD. I just had to go and make sure the camera was pointing at something gray, and you can see the OSD ghosting in the background. But I will say, after I had two Betaflight boards with the same exact problem, and I know when I Google search this, I'm the only one having this problem. No one else has this problem. The only thing I can think of is that maybe I hack up these boards too much. Like I said, I had a hell of a time trying to get that jumper uh, soldered for the VBAT to bring VBAT back up to the top side of the board. And something messed up because I ended up blowing out that trace or something and I had to jumper it out. So maybe I put too much heat to the board and caused another bad solder joint. But I'm done with these Betaflight F3 boards. You know, I like buying them because they support Boris and he's done a lot for the hobby. But this is the uh, same... This is, I have two boards, and both boards have the same exact problem with the OSC cutting out. It's, an, it's not the problem with the OSC cutting out. It's the problem with the video going completely black. So anyway, I get all that done, and I go, great, I'm ready to fly it. So I'm flying it around, and I have really bad, what I believe is yaw oscillation. And I'm trying everything to tune it out. And uh, I started, I originally started trying to tune from scratch, Trying to tune out that oscillation, I could not get it tuned out. So then I went back to the defaults, tried to modify the defaults, still could not get it tuned out. And it looked like it was yaw oscillation on hard accelerations. If I cut down on throttle and let it coast down, it was nice and smooth. So I'm Google searching this, and people, it seems like it's a problem with the gyro. And people are talking about setting their filter settings to filter out noise on the gyro, even though I have this board soft mounted. So I'm doing research on how to, you know, do black box to see where you're getting noise on the gyro to put a notch filter in. And I go and I Google search more oscillation problems. And that guy, I think his name Joshua Bradwell, if you are into quadcopters and FPV, you probably ran across his videos because he has the most in-depth videos on the hobby around. I watched a video that's called like real life troubleshooting oscillations and he goes check the motors, check the props and I know I said I know it's not the motors, no it's not the props so I keep on forwarding through the video and on that video he opened up the run cam swift and saw that the board was loose inside the run cam swift. Now this is my second build using the run cam swift and I had no problems with my first build 
So I was like, well, I'll give that a try. Be oh yeah, because another thing I th thought was funny is when I would take my goggles off and line line of sight flight, I would think, man, it doesn't. I can't see the oscillations at all. But I thought maybe the oscillations were so high you couldn't see it, and I couldn't hear it either. So anyway, I take my run can swift apart. Sure enough, the board falls right out. So I hot glued the run cam the board into the housing, put it back together, put it to default PIDs, and bam, that was it. The oscillation was because of the run cam swift. So I was like, man, I can't believe that. But at least I figured it out. So I went and I, uh, at this point, I haven't been flying in like, two weeks I haven't really flown yeah probably two weeks probably over two weeks I haven't really flown so I spent the evening just flying getting used to it um this thing has a lot more power than uh I'm used to but it's nice because you can really catch yourself uh, when you're doing a free fall you can really catch yourself down at the bottom compared to my other build um, it, it does seem like it's a battery hog than my other build. Well, of course it is going to be more of a battery hog. And it seems like my runs are real short. But, uh, when I was looking at the counters on the OSC, you know, I was still getting three, three and a half minute runs. So, oh yeah, and on default PIDs, it's what I would consider locked in. Um, maybe I'll go and clear out another PID profile and try to tune it myself just to see if I tune it, how I'll get it. But uh, uh, default PIDs uh, work fine for me. So uh, that's pretty much it for this build. Now I'm gonna start uh, flying it some more and uh, you know, start flying it some more and just get used to flying and have fun of flying. You know, uh, before this build, I was kind of getting bored of flying and I wanted to do a build because builds are fun. But when I started having all these problems on this build, uh, you know, I just wanted to get it up in the air and flying. So I got it up in the air and flying. So at the end of this video, I recorded a quick, um, I recorded a quick, uh, footage of me flying off the run cam too. But at the end of the video, I accidentally hit the ground a little bit. And on air mode, if you hit the ground a little bit or you hit a tree, it just makes the thing go crazy and you can't recover. So I'll just... Uh, put in that video at the end so you can see it flying. Thanks for watching. Um, oh yeah, by the way, oh yeah, let me talk about the this whole thing's about the stinging frame. So now that I'm done building this frame and I flew it and wrecked it a little bit, I haven't done any catastrophic wrecks. But my thoughts of the frame, I love the frame. First off, I love having the top mount battery again, going from bottom mount to top mount. The top mount is so much better. Um, the center of this frame, you can just tell that it's solid. It has eight standoffs. I came from the R5X, and like I said, I get the numbers and the letters all mixed up. But the, I was flying the X Hover R5X or X5R or whatever it's called, and that has two standoffs, and it's tall. It has four standoffs, and it's taller, and you can tell that it's not as secure. This thing, the main frame is like super secure. Now the Downside to that is when you're taking the top plate on and off, like I was doing with the troubleshooting, you're putting in eight screws, taking out eight screws. But this frame, the main frame seems solid. The arms are solid. The frame itself, I'm glad I went with this frame. Uh, locking in the camera is so nice. I mean, I didn't have the 3D printed mount for my R5X to keep the camera angle locked in, but the way this camera angle is locked in, just every time I crash, I, I know my camera didn't move. Like I said, uh, this frame is awesome. I have the motors seem fine. I have plenty of power. And these tri blades seem fine, even though these are version one. They seem fine for me. And uh, like I said, I'm done with Unify Pros. I had so much problems with this. You know, this $13 one works so much better than any Unify Pro. And if this $13 one burns up, guess what? It's $13. I'll buy another one. I think the biggest problem with the Unify Pros is they don't have heat sinks on them. And like I said again about the Betaflight F3 board, I, like I said, I was able to halfway get it working so I can tune on the OSD. But 
you know, I'm just done with these Betaflight F3 boards, uh, comment below. When I Google search it, no one else has the problem of the video going completely black on the Betaflight F3 boards. It's only me. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, abusing the boards with the soldering iron or something. But uh, like I said, this is the last flight. This is the last uh, build with Betaflight F3. Um, F4 all-in-one boards are coming out of the market and multiple manufacturers are making them. So I like to support uh, the actual Betaflight project, but as far as buying this specific board, uh, I'm done because I had two boards and both boards have the same exact problems. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this build series. And like I said, at the end of this video is going to be my uh, flying around today this afternoon. See ya.